go. All right. So placing my hands on my heart, taking that deep cleansing breath of love and gratitude. So grateful for this time to come together to be the two or more gathered in the name and the nature of love. Grateful for our willingness to care for ourselves in this way, to show up for ourselves, to show up for each other. Grateful for the uh, loving, compassionate community that we've uh, brought together. Grateful for our willingness to um, read and learn how to live the teachings of Jesus through A Course in Miracles. We're grateful for our dedication and devotion going forward into this new year, 2023. And we're so very grateful for all of the earthly and heavenly helpers, all of our mighty companions that walk with us and talk with us each day, that love us and bless us and support us, that support the technology we get to use to come together. We ask that they remain with us uh, throughout this week, and uh, we're grateful to share those blessings we receive from them and the love that we are with Mother Earth and all humanity because we are one. In grace and gratitude, we let it be, and so it is. Amen. So we are in... Um, still in the manual for teachers. And um, we're covering today, How Will the World End? Which I believe is number 14. My book is not numbered. Hi, Kathy. And um, 15 is each one to be judged in the end. Uh, I have so many gems from both of these, but I think I would like to start us off with um, the uh, section 15 is each one to be judged in the end. I'm going to start near the end of paragraph two into paragraph three. Uh, actually, I'm gonna read a tiny, a couple of lines in paragraph one too. It all ties together, you'll see. <laughs> so Jesus says he, meaning God, will hear his sinlessness proclaimed around the world, setting it free as God's final judgment on him is received. Oh, he, we are the first he. Take that back. The first he is not God. He will hear his sinlessness proclaimed around and around the world, setting it free as God's final judgment on him is received. This is the judgment in which salvation lies. The judgment that will set him free. This is the judgment in which all things are freed with him. And then down into the end of um, paragraph two, learn to be quiet. Robin, where are you? <laughs> learn to be quiet for his voice is heard in stillness and his judgment comes to all who stand aside in quiet listening and wait for him. You who are sometimes sad and sometimes angry, who sometimes feel your just due is not giving you and your best efforts meet with lack of appreciation and even contempt, give up these foolish thoughts. They are too small and meaningless to occupy your holy mind an instant longer. God's judgment waits for you to set you free. And he's telling us God's judgment is that we are completely innocent, sinless. That's God's judgment. So the judgment day doesn't mean that we're going to stand in front of God and he's going to go, well, you did this wrong and he did that wrong and he did this wrong. <laughs> like that, it, he's going to go, you are pure innocence, perfectly sinless. That is God's judgment. So who are we as emanations of God to say that God is wrong in his judgment of us? So anything else that we believe about ourselves is wrong. It's just wrong. And we can let it go because it's not helpful. So that's where I'm starting us off. <laughs> 
who else would like to share? Go ahead, Leslie. Just wanted to say Happy New Year, everybody. It's good to see you all. Mm -hmm. And Linda, you totally stole my thunder. I highlighted exactly that. And that's <laughs> what I was going to talk about. <laughs> what did you hear when you read it, Leslie? Well, I just took it like, especially paragraph three, when it says, uh, and maybe it's because you and I know Linda are both choose on the Enneagram, but, but who sometimes feels your just due is not giving you and your best efforts meet with lack of appreciation and mm -hmm. even contempt. Give up these foolish thoughts. And it just made me laugh because I've been having to uh, invoke my inner cheerleader. <laughs> just, I mean, I usually feel appreciated at work. A, a lot of times I do, but it just, my ego just drives me crazy because I do the littlest thing and I expect everybody to be like, wow, oh, great job. <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and, and sometimes if I don't even get a thank you, I'm just all a little huffy, but I'm so grateful my inner cheerleader can do the back clips and say, wow, well done you, well done, you know, yeah. but I just love how he said, those are just foolish thoughts. And I know they are, they're all ego thoughts. It doesn't matter. You know, God's not, it's not good or bad. It's, it's just isn't. And I truly am happy to be truly helpful. I say that prayer all the time, the truly helpful prayer. So yeah. am I giving to get or do I really want to be helpful? <laughs> right. and I really want to be helpful. So that's just that's just what was struck for me. And and I agree. I have a lot highlighted in all of this. So good to see you, Robin. Was it your birthday yesterday? Yay, oh, I remember. <laughs> I was in heaven all day long and evening. That's all I can say. It was like an ordinary day with extraordinary moments and literally every moment. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy to hear that, Robin. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. That's awesome. So happy you and were I born. Have a, I have a yeah. follow-up question that may be, I mean, it may be ridiculous on top of what you said, Linda, but so I take what you said and then I ask, okay, so how in the world did all these traditional religion pe religious people come up with this idea that, you know, we go to this place after we die or whatever you call it, transition, and there's this little book and somebody, it's written in there, everything we've ever done, and somebody tells us, you know, this was good, bad, indifferent, or whatever, and then somebody makes a decision to throw us into a eternal punishment or whatever. And, you know, the same thing with telling ourselves that we're original sinners and we're sinful and we have to repent all the time. I mean, I guess my question is, was that done purposefully or was there was that done as a way to just subjugate people? I think it's a little bit of, of both, Deborah. I think my understanding of it is that some of it is just other people's interpretation of it. And some of it was done intentionally to try and control people. And my, my sense of the whole standing in line, waiting at the pearly gates with St. Peter, looking at the book is just like, like our name's going to be there and he's going to go, okay, it's your, it was your time. So you get to go through, or guess what? It wasn't your time. You have to go back. You know, um, I just imagine like, like that young man that was in that football game last Monday that had a heart attack on the field and it took them nine minutes to revive him. Like he was in that place, possibly standing at the pearly gates with St. Peter and St. Peter was like, oh no, honey, you have to go back. You know, so th that's my interpretation of the book. And honestly, I only imagine that thing with St. Peter just because it makes me chuckle because I think of the um, joke that Sister Joan Chittister told about, <laughs> about St. Peter letting people through the pearly gates. Okay, I'm gonna tell this joke because it's on my mind now. And so there's people standing in line waiting to get into heaven through the pearly gates and the guy gives him his name and he says, yeah, you're, you're good here. Just, you know, walk on in, just be quiet when you go past room number three. 
And so he's like, okay. And he walks through the gates and then the next guy comes up and he gives him his name. And St. Peter says, oh yeah, I see you're right here. You're good to go. So just walk on through the gates. Just be quiet when you walk past room number three. And then the third guy, he's like, he can't stand it. He has to ask what is up with room number three. And St. Peter says, oh, that's where the Catholics are. They think they're the only ones up here. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) And it just, it makes me laugh. First of all, because I have a Catholic background. And second of all, because it was a Catholic nun that told that joke. Um, And it just makes me smile every time it just, you know, reaffirms for me that God has a sense of humor. He would not put that beautiful being on this planet to make me laugh like that. So, um, yeah, I feel like, you know, the whole judgment and original sin is just some people's interpretations and other people's ways of trying to control. I just have been around those kind of people lately, and I I really have a hard time understanding how they can believe all this stuff. And it seems like what Jennifer would call magical thinking. Yes. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I feel like because I do have people in my um, realms of friends and stuff that have that same understanding, um, you know, they're Methodist or Catholic or, you know, they identify as different where they believe all that stuff about the hell and brimstone and original sin and all that. And I just love them and bless them and pray for them because I'm not interested in having a a scary God that's watching over me and taking tabs on every stupid little thing I've ever done. Or to be controlled through guilt and manipulation and, and all that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Does that help? Yeah, it does. It's just, I mean, I struggle with trying to understand it because I don't believe all that either. It just doesn't make sense to me that a loving God would act that way or behave that way. It doesn't match up. Right. Yeah. And I don't, I don't try to understand it. I just feel like that's how they believe. I'm not going to try and change their mind. I'm not the, you know, going door to door, trying to get people to believe in the way that uh, Course in Miracles teaches that God is. Um, so I just, I just know that if, if and when it comes time for them to understand God is a loving God that's not up there judging us, that will happen. In the meantime, I will listen to them, be as loving and compassionate as I can, not believe a damn word they say, <laughs> and pray for them, send them on their merry way. That's a good way to approach it, Linda. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. So Mary Lee and then Carla and then Gwen. I I just have a a quick uh, thing. I, um, of course, sometimes some of the passages have been hard for me to understand uh, uh, or fully appreciate. But I really did like the readings this time, meaning they spoke to me. And in that, in the section, how will the world end? That second paragraph starts until forgiveness is complete. The world does have a purpose. It becomes the home in which forgiveness is born. And that made, that really made sense to me. Uh, Because so often I question like, um, well, just like what Deborah was saying, you know, because so often the examples around us are perhaps people that aren't uh, aren't being forgiving, and it causes us to, you know, maybe be that way. But um, it it seems to make sense that this this is the home, meaning the world where forgiveness is born. This is, this is our place to learn that. Oh, what a perfect place to learn that since we constantly have to be forgiving ourselves for different things we think or do uh, and others who don't reflect for us perhaps what we would like to have foremost in our lives. So I appreciated these two sections. 
a lot. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed the Mary Lee. And the the funniest part of that, because um, I highlighted that highlighted that as well, is that all of the need for forgiveness arises because we believed we separated from God. And then we felt guilty. So that's why we feel this need to be forgiven because we have this guilt because we think we separated from God, but it's an illusion. we would never separated from God. We are all thoughts in the mind of God right here, right now. So there's not, there is nothing to forgive. So, but in it, it's when we finally get that, like I could have had a V8 moment. That's when salvation comes. That's when the, you know, this world disappears, the disappearance of the universe that Gary Renard talked about. Yeah, thank you. So Carla and then Gwen and then Linda Kay. All right, I forgot I raised my hand. So I guess I wanna share like the, the, it's from the beginning, how will the world end the very first paragraph? Can what, oops, my lot, I just picture went out. Can you hear me? I don't know if you went out. Yep, I can hear you. We just can't see you, and that's okay. okay there there you. <laughs> so, can what has no beginning really end? The world will end in an illusion as it began. Yet, will its ending be an illusion of mercy, the illusion of forgiveness, complete? Excluding no one, limitless and gentleness will cover it, hiding. Well, it gives on and on, but what we read earlier is that our purpose is forgiveness. But how I can how we forgive illusion. It's forgiving, that's why for all forgiveness is self-forgiveness. All love is self, everything is self, everything. All compassion is self-compassion. Everything is self, self, self. Just add self in front of everything and you got it. So, if you don't mind, I like to, I wrote a poem. Quite long, but. I don't know if someone suggests a title, it comes to them because I have a title, but I don't really resonate with, it's called Playing Small. I confess, I surrender, I forgive, I accept. And finally, I love. For so long, I've seen myself as flawed, unable, unwilling, small. And I thought that was something, but it was nothing. Cause it is illusion. It is a story I created and believed as true. What if, what if we're way more than what we see, what we hear, what we feel, the body? The true self, the divine self does not try to change the small self allows us to choose whatever we choose. All the suffering choices, 
all the judgments, choices, and just loves us. It allows us to choose suffering, loss, God's love, reject God's love, and it offers us truth, love. In fact, it loves us so much that all our choices are allowed. So I confess, I, as the Carla self, I made plenty, many of unloving choices from what I want. I surrender my will to thy will, God's will, divine will. And I forgive. I forgive the one who didn't know any different, who believed that illusion was real. I accept. I accept where I was, where I am, where I truly am, and love, just love, live from the divine self, perfect love. Thank you, Carla. That was beautiful. Perfect love sounds like the title. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Gwen, then Linda, and then Mitzi. Thanks, Carla. You always have such great poems that we can really get a lot out of. I found the reading, well, I have to change my schedule because I seem to read it later in the evening when I'm kind of like, I think my brain is starting to go to sleep for the night. So I need to do it sooner. But I was actually going to respond to what Deborah was speaking about earlier. And I can relate so well because I was brought up, my dad was a, a pastor and he left congregational churches that he had when I was a, a kid. But we went into this other, faith and they taught that the world was going to end it as a specific year you know 1974 the world was going to end and I have and I have memory of being 10 years old on the sofa crying and I believe my parents had company the adults were talking in the kitchen in the other room you know about some of these things and I remember crying and I think now it was a profound thought to have as a 10 year old that you know, why would God create all these different people throughout the world that look different with the different cultures and foods and ethnicities, and then do away with all of them, but this few that were select and chosen? It did not make sense, but I have to say that some did something to me subconsciously, and I really had to work on a lot of fear in my life. I don't feel I was really prepared for living in life because I really felt I was going to go off somewhere, you know, with my family and God knew when that was going to happen. I was hoping I would be there and not abandoned. So religions, ideas and beliefs can be dangerous to your health. I'm here to tell you. And I firmly feel that the less I have, the better and happier I am. And thank God I've done a lot of work and gotten rid of a lot of that. And I am happy about it. But it is interesting how these different things. And as you were saying, you know, I too have friends with all different, you know, the, the fundamental, you know, waiting for the rapture and Jesus is coming again to the people on the other end with the conspiracy theories. And I don't really want much to do with either of them. <laughs> I feel the same way. Yeah. And that, you know, that's kind of the same message that we got being Catholic too, is that we're the chosen ones. I know that I have 
Jewish friends, that that's what they were taught. They are the chosen one. I feel like each group has people in it that thinks that they're the chosen ones. <laughs> and I will say, because of our religious beliefs, twice in my life, we actually, so we left a church and a group and lost like all of our friends and our support. And if that is not really difficult, yeah. um, I'm, I'm here to say, yeah, it was very, very hard. And, but, you know, we also find out who our true friends are and then exactly. reassess all those for ourselves. Yeah, we did that too when we left the Catholic church. And then, uh, you know, my dad used to say, uh, I wouldn't like Groucho Marx, I think it was, it said, I wouldn't belong to a group that would accept me as a member. <laughs> so he would say, I belong to the church of what's happening now. <laughs> of course, it was the 70s. So, you know, there's that. Yeah, thank you, Gwen. Linda Kay, and then Mitzi. Forgive me, I'm right in the middle of preparing food, so I'm I'm not on uh, the the, right. the video. Um, what I wanted to say first and foremost, Linda, I I love coming <laughs> to this group and listening every week. I know I typically don't say very very much every once in a while because I'm learning this. The Course in Miracles material is still all very new to me. Half the time I don't understand it, but I'm very, very intrigued. And um, you're an awesome moderator, but I, I thank you for hosting. I thank you for explaining things so well. I thank you for your incredible sense of humor and your uh, just amazing love. You, you really are a beacon of light for me. The other Linda, we have many other Lindas in our life now, don't we? We do, we do. I know there's at least four or five of us in Master. Yeah, I think there's five now. So if I say Linda S, that's Linda Shragi, other people might right. not know her. But anyway, so thank you for this amazing opportunity to learn. I wanted to give a shout out to Deborah. Deborah, I listen to your compelling questions every week and think, Wow. How did she know I'd been thinking about that? Yeah. Every week, even your questions of your own life and your own pain and your own suffering. I'm like, how did she know I think about that? <laughs> and, and so today when she was bringing up about, you know, sinners and your pearly gates discussion, I think, wow, I've been thinking about that for the past week. Like, how does this, I had a certain idea about Jesus, but I've been in all these different fundamentalist churches and assemblies of God and Catholic and Methodist. So I've just been the gamut and I've seen all these other um, versions. <laughs> and I, I, I don't even know what to make of that anymore. I just think, wow, I'm studying some stuff that's just so radically different. And I don't want to not honor what other people believe. But I love what Gwen said, that she's a young kid looking at there's, why would God make all these other cultures, all these other colors, all they, trust me, I've dated many of all these other cultures and all these other colors. And I'm married to someone from another culture and color. And um, I used to have the same thought. And when I was in college and had been around a lot of born again Christians, all my friends, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And all your Muslim friends, Linda, they're all going to hell. I'm sorry, you better try and convert them because they're going to go to hell. And I met this one woman, her, her, her name was Muna. I'd never met a woman of such deep and profound faith. And I thought I would, my whole life, I could never be like her. She was a Muslim. And she blew me away because I really saw her walk a faith walk. And I, I it just couldn't wrap my mind around all these people are going to die. So I still have many of those same Muslim friends all these years later. 
they send me lovely scriptures and readings and things from Malaysia or wherever, Pakistan or, and um, I read it and I think, well, isn't that basically what I've been taught? Isn't that more like we just change a word and basic and, you know, they're saying these things in Arabic. It's, we could be saying these things in any language. So it's funny to, it's, it's almost validating or redeeming, although I don't think one needs to be validated or redeemed. But Gwen, when you said that today, I thought, yeah, I guess I'm really not all that crazy that all these years, I just think people from all over the world are welcome to believe what they believe. And if somebody comes around to A Course in Miracles and finds it compelling as I accidentally, although there are no accidents, found Jennifer Hadley when I wasn't even looking for Jennifer Hadley. And here I am just going deeper and deeper and deeper in this work. Um, I don't know, you all blow me away. And Carla, your poems are just incredible. I love when you read things. And I think everyone in this group is, an, is, is a beautiful teacher and a beautiful student. And I feel so blessed and so grateful and so humbled to be here. And Deborah, please keep asking your questions because if you don't, who's going to ask these hard questions? It helps me. I can't even put my questions into a form half the time. I think these thoughts, but Deborah finds a way to actually put them into an understandable question. And I, I, I really do live for those questions. Thank you. Love you all. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. We love and appreciate everything that you bring to this group too. So, so glad that you're here. Yeah. And I'll let Deborah know, cause it looks like she dropped off. I don't know if she had something else that she had to do, but um, I will be sending her the recording anyway. So, so we have Mitzi and then Derwin and then Hamera. Hi. Hi, everyone. And uh, Happy New Year also. And uh, thank you for everybody's reflections and and uh, discussions. Um, I was thinking um, the whole idea of forgiveness being the, the main reason we're here um, to uh, work out forgiveness. And and since I don't uh, actually have a memory of choosing my parents, I uh, was born into situations and um, I don't have a memory of, of um, the separation of thinking that, but I have felt alone and, um, and, and that really, um, uh, that really, uh, so made me also feel unsafe. Um, and, and that was the uh, reason why I took my life in my own hands, so to speak, and, um, and started carving things out. And even though I would get teachings to trust and surrender, like some of the others people would say, you know, they were cloaked in religion or in some other cultural or family uh stories and 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 it wasn't it it wasn't something i could really um latch on to it wasn't so i want to say that created uh actions and things that i you know did because I felt alone, because I felt unsafe, because I didn't feel like I knew the way that I have a whole history now to work out, um, forgiving myself for, for things in, in this way, that when something comes up and I'm feeling that guilt or that shame, then I remember I don't have to. It's not real. It wasn't mine to carry. And, um, but it is a process because, you know, although I spent most of my life hoping that I would 
wake up enlightened and I would love everyone and I would feel this thing, you know, it hasn't happened. <laughs> and so I'm like, <laughs> so every day, as Jennifer would say, and as Course in Miracles would say, I find myself choosing again. And um, so I do, this section does resonate with me. I don't often understand, but um, I think um, that, it, that it, it does give me a lot of peace. It does give me um, a, a way to look at myself differently and to no longer feel alone, no longer feel separated, no longer have the low self-worth, to be able to surrender, to be able to trust. And those are things I work on continuously. Um, but I feel like it's, um, I feel like I'm in a different space, you know, that I'm not. So I, the guilt comes from time to time, but I think what I felt was really aloneness and separation. And that is what I, I mostly um, deal with. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mitzi. Um, yeah, that I mean, that sense of being alone, that sense of being separate, I mean, that, that's the whole crux of what, you know, separating from God. That's what we, we just thought, oh, wouldn't it be fun to play with that idea? And um, yeah, so that, that's where we're starting to get ourselves back to is the reality that we never really separated. We're just playing around in, in the mind of God just like little kids playing on a playground or playing a board game. And every once in a while you roll the dice and you end up having to go back four spaces, you know, that's all it is. So we'll, we'll be able to remember it eventually. In the meantime, let's enjoy the, the, the playing part. Yeah. Derwin. Yes. Thank you. Hello, everybody all light workers that we are happy to be back a few weeks that i wasn't here but um i was in good hands of course um i wanted to share a small bit of Paragraph five of uh, chap no, chapter, section 14. So the last paragraph, how will the world end the last paragraph? And why? I just caught myself reading it multiple times, even ending section 14, going into 15. I wanted to go back to read those sentences. There was something nice about them. And what it is, I don't know, but maybe we will know. Let's read it, check it, check it out together. So it starts, the world will end in joy because it is a place of sorrow. When joy has come, the purpose of the world has gone. The world will end in peace because it is a place of war. When peace has come, what is the purpose of the world? The world will end in laughter because it is a place of tears. Where there is laughter, who can longer weep? It's just those sentences that I find so pretty because for me, the sentences are also bittersweet. It feels like an end, right? It feels like it's an end yet if you read well, it's salvation. And, and that is, yeah, I find it so beautifully written. And um, yeah, I, I at this moment appreciate seeing this beauty in these, in these simple sentences, in these very simple sentences, 
to feel the peace it gives me. And where Jennifer says we rise above the battlefield, this is what we are doing. This is where we rise above the battlefield. And um, also I like choosing again and again and again and again and again and again. And I don't worry because like, like we all share, like we all read, it's, it's an illusion to think we are not whole. So reminding ourselves of the perfection that we are, yeah, I choose again and again each time for that thought. And that, that, is, that, is, that is the human experience. Thank you. Namaste to everybody. Have a nice time. Thank you, Derwin. So good to have you back. Yeah, when I read that, I was thinking um, a couple of things popped up. I, with, first, I was thinking about how um, I think it was Buddha that said that life is suffering. And basically, because that's that's what he was saying. <laughs> and the other thing I thought was, yeah, I guess I'm not ready for this world to end yet because I would like to see and attend my son's wedding in July. I would like to possibly have grandchildren. So y'all have to stick around until that's all over with. <laughs> because my salvation ain't ready to be happening yet because I want to experience those things. So... I apologize in advance. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Linda, thank can you. we have salvation amidst you experiencing all those things? Lord, I hope so. That would be totally cool. <laughs> Why not? We can have whatever we want, right? We just have to choose it. <laughs> yep. Um, Hamir, I see you put your hand down, but I didn't know if you still would like to share. So I'm just going to give you that opportunity. So I see you unmuted, but I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Okay, yeah. I was like, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You guys couldn't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> like that commercial. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, everybody. I'm just getting so much out of everybody's shares. And God, Carla, I love, love, love your poems. They just lift me so much every time you do one of your poems. Um, in, uh, no, you know, I didn't have much to share. I just wanted to, in response to, I think what Linda Kay was saying in regards to um, one of her friends being Muslim and um, she was one of the most faithful people. You know, when I, I took a course by Carol Howe and those of you who don't know who she is, she's like one of the pioneers of the Course in Miracles. She was there with like Bill Thetford. That was, he, he was, he, she wrote a book about him. Anyway, on one of the modules that she teaches, she reads this beautiful uh, sort of like, and it's not poetry, it's like an intention, it's like a declaration. And it's a declaration of liberation. And then she finishes and she says, who do you think this, where do you think this came from? And she said, the Sufis. And the Sufi is the mysticism of Islam. So, you know, I love that we're talking like this because we're all one. Um, we have, uh, I know not the people in this room, obviously, but I think a lot of people get so influenced, but by what they watch on media and what a particular culture or religion represents. And it, they just show a very tiny minority of fundamentalists, of Muslims, and what who they really are, are like the Rumis, um, a lot of them. And so I just wanted to just emphasize that, it, and it sounded like Course in Miracles when she was reading it. It sounded like a non-dualism um and it was from islam so i just wanted to emphasize that thank you so much yeah thank you for that Hamira. yeah i feel that same way like we are all uh like ramdas said we're all just walking each other home uh, you know even the 
the text of course in miracles says this is not the only path it's just the fastest which and even that could be a judgment you know so yeah thank you for that grace I just wanted to add to that, that I'm a member of the chosen race and I'm Jewish and it never resonates with me. I mean, I just want to say, I, I do not own that at all. We are all one, we're all loved, we are loved. There's no differences between us. So yeah, not very proud of my race at the moment. But I'm doing a pono pono for the whole, for all of us. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Grace. Yeah, absolutely. We're, you know, I, and I, I say, um, you know, that I have Jewish friends or I have Catholic friends or I have Muslim friends. Uh, and I know that they are not the only representation of what people of that faith believe. So yeah, just want to go on record saying that. <laughs> Mary Lee, go ahead. I know I already spoke once uh, today, but I have been thinking in the last few moments with other person's comments and uh, Mitzi, how she was emphasizing how one can start to feel quite alone. Um, about 30, 40 years ago, um, after I had started questioning the Baptist church, and they're the ones that are behind door number three, Linda, I, I thank you. So anyway, after going through that and kind of trying to get that, uh, like, no, I don't think that's correct. Um, I did study some Catholicism and then I studied some and I bought books, the religions of, it, it was religions of man, but that was before, you know, both um, women and men were included with the pronouns and so forth. And um, I was always still kind of like searching for the perfect place that seemed to include everyone, everyone, where it wasn't this closed, uh, exclusive. Uh, if you do this, then you're going to heaven. And if you believe like we do, oh, well, then everything's wonderful. And I was still in that mindset. And I remember once I went and for the life of me, I'm not going to be able to say the name of the religion. Uh, I can't pronounce it the, clearly, and it doesn't really matter. It could be any of them. But I went to this tabernacle or temple and I thought, oh, they kept saying how they're so inclusive, so inclusive. Everybody, everybody, everybody is Oh, and so I bought a book of this place and I read three fourths of it. And I thought, wow, they really are inclusive. They really are. And then I came to the chapter that said, oh, of course, not homosexuals. Oh, no, they're excluded. Of course, they're excluded. Everyone else is OK. Oh. I thought, give me a break. So in my earlier search in life, I did not find one that didn't have their little quirks or their exclusions. And it's, uh, I have really enjoyed Course in Miracles. I have a lot to learn parts I don't understand for sure. But then once in a while, a week comes along and I, I, get, I get it. And I'm like, that sounds all inclusive. Because, you know, those dogmas and things that uh, form our thoughts and our minds when we were young, you know, from the time I was... Um, I can't remember a time that we didn't 
you know, get dressed for Sunday church. And I'm not saying that's all bad, but boy, to get rid of some of that, we're all going to heaven. Sorry, you can't. That exclusiveness, that, that takes a lot of years to uh, work through that. So I, I have appreciated many of the thoughts and sentiments shared today. And the portion that, um, that Derwin was reading, that too was very touching to my heart. That too felt like joy. Yeah, how if the world is going to end in bliss, what's to be sad about, right? <laughs> yeah, and I feel that way too, Mary Lee. The like the whole, and I know that there are Course in Miracles students who are against gay people or against Muslims or against different races or different religions. So it's not, you know, it's not the people that study A Course in Miracle are any better or any worse than anybody else. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm grateful that we in this group seem to have that same feeling that, you know, we're all in the same pot of soup okay. and going to the same place. Yeah, thank you. Robin. Oh, you're muted, my friend. Thank you. Yes. It's so sweet because it seems like the holidays are over and everybody's back. And I look at people and I'm like, oh, yay. So um, that's really sweet. The um, I'm just coming back. You know, I came in and forgot to uh, show myself when you said, well, Robin, where are you? And I'm like, so I just want to come to that sentence that you you brought up uh, for all of us, and it is uh, um, it's in the uh, section fifteen, and on, on thirty eight on my, in with my blue book or our blue book, and that um, paragraph two, and of course I just keep saying the same thing because I feel like that's what I've gotten, and it's so important. And I'm sorry for the repetition, but when I see the word quietly, it's like we have to read the sentence. So I'm just here to do that for us. That's what I do. And it's uh, sentence number 12. And I, I know that each of your, your hearts were melted and, and we all are in the same place with this. It says, learn to be quiet for his voice is heard in stillness and his judgment comes to all who stand aside in quiet listening and wait for him. And I guess for me, anything that speaks of quietness, um, it's just always a new refreshing idea and practice that I feel is so helpful and I just so I so I just can't help myself but to bring it to forth and anybody else can bring it too then we'd sing it twice <laughs> sing it maybe we could sing it but anyway thank you and it's nice to see everybody back from the holidays yeah thank you Robin it, it's nice I just love that every time I read that word it just brings your sweet face and personality to mind and it just makes me smile so well you're you're just you're really generous i just remember waking up one day reading the word quiet in the course in miracles and i said this word is on practically on every page yeah. or some quiet quietly quietness and i took it on as a study it was like I just need to pay attention. And I feel like it has just enhanced my experience with A Course in Miracles in this community. Yeah. And that's what I love to share. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, and he, he says several times in the course that he's repeating himself over and over again. If we could just get one thought and you know learn it well and live it and take it into our being, we would have it that would be it salvation would be accomplished so yeah 
Yeah, exactly. Robin, you're living it is what Grace said. Mitzi. Aww. Thank you. Hi, Scott. That's got to be Scott. I, I don't think anybody else would be kissing Leslie. But Who is that <laughs> with our Leslie? That's my husband. He just said hi to Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi. How's everybody doing today? Good. So good Excellent. to see you. Beautiful day, isn't it? It is. It is. There you go. Bye, honey. See you guys. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Mitzi, go ahead. Okay. Well, I just wanted to thank Robin for bringing that up. And the um, idea crossed my mind while she was talking about what God's judgment is. And his ju from what we read today, his judgment is that we're sinless, we're guiltless, we're perfect, we're innocent. But I can't hear that unless I'm quiet. I just can't um, remember or feel it um, because when I get wrapped up in everything, that's when it all goes right in the crapper. So um, that, I, I, so I do need that quiet time and I do need to listen. I do need to remember and I do need to hear it over and over again. So I thank you, uh, Robin, for bringing that up. and. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> nice to see your help. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <Thank me. laughs> all right. Anybody else have any last thing they'd like to share before we close out? All righty. Linda, well, this is yeah. this is Nancy. Can I say yes. something? Yeah. I just want to special. I want to thank everyone. Everyone spoke all of the thoughts. There wasn't, I can't, I mean, I could add little things to each one, but basically, and uh, uh, Linda, Linda Kay, I think it was yes. you, when you were speaking, I was like, wait a minute. It's so like, she's been a, that little person on my, in my shoulder all, all of my life, living the same thing. And it's like, I've been to all the different religions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it's everything. So he, here's what I, um here's i'm going to keep this really simple oh with the the cancer and all this this year it's like one robin's the quietness it's like mm -hmm. um i remember i had plenty of time but i filled it with but that was the purpose i, I fully realized that last night um in uh, the tv and everything but um uh, it's like i'm alone here most of the time unless my daughter comes or something and um, so all of the realizations that I've had this year, um, I wouldn't have had because I was always the busy one doing and fixing the world and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but then I remember in the course it, where it says, um, when we decided to stop, to leave heaven, this is, these are, this is my interpretation of it. At that moment is when the Holy Spirit, God created the Holy Spirit. And the purpose of doing that was so that when we came, you know, here in this world and all this stuff that we created and we made and all this stuff, um, it's like the chatter, that's the, that's the, 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 um, the ego. That's what we, la we label the ego is, that says yeah, the ego is in the details. And keeping us busy and keeping us with all these thoughts and all these different things distract us from being quiet enough to hear the voice for God. And that's the voice, uh, that's Jesus' voice, the voice for God. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you can't hear it. You can only have one thought going on in your mind at a time. And if it's full of all the ego stuff, you know, thinking about this and that, um, that's that's what you chose at the moment to hear, to listen to. So we only have the two choices of um, the fear side or, or the love side, God side. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the one you're at any given moment. And you and so I like late last week I said, you know what? Like Jennifer said, um, our minds are the most what do you call it? The computer, the greatest, or whatever it is. And a, a computer needs an operating system. 
And then the operating system needs programs. And so we basically have two. We have the Eagle uh, operate, Eagle program and we have the God for love program, fear and love. You can only run one at a time. Yeah. And um, so that's like, oh, it's like, and I could choose whichever one I want to choose. I'm free. That's the free will. The free will is to choose. That's all the free will is. We get to choose which one we want to live in that any moment or whatever. Yeah. But, um, I could go on and on. This was the most fantastic day. Um, and, um, and all I can do is listen, basically, because I'm stuck here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, You're choosing but this, to be stuck in a good place right now, though, Nancy Gale. So. Right. I'm choosing. I'm choosing. Yes. Peace. The, <laughs> my lesson three, sister one. It's like, yeah, that's me. Thank um, you. Also. Anyway. It says we're all, instead of all roads leading to Rome, um, all roads lead to heaven, or all paths, we just choose uh, what we want to do on that path. Yeah. Or who we want to go with or something like that. I'm going to stop now, but anyways, thank you, everyone. It was such a blessing. It's such a blessing. And Drew, in your, your, your very quiet, gentle uh, beingness, it's just fantastic. It's just... And um, Mary Leah wanted to say something. Um, I've watched you <laughs> over the time and asking your questions. And then I remember one particular, I don't remember the, the question, but one day and what uh, you asked a question, you didn't understand something. And then we spent the, a lot of time listening to you and by, we didn't uh, interrupt you. And by the time you were finished, you had solved your own problem. You had, the, you had answered your own. And I thought, I still remember, I can see that such a beautiful experience because we listened to you we did not that's all we did that's we we just listened and you we gave you that gift of listening and you gave us the gift of of and uh, of working to um the answer yourself but that answer you shared with all of us because we listened thank you and thank you um robin the quietness, yes, the quiet gentleness. It's all in the lessons. I'm not going to stop, but just what a blessing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Nancy Go. Yeah. So next, next week, we will um, continue in the manual for teachers. We're just going to do the one section, which I believe is section number 16. It's called How Should the Teacher of God Spend His Day? Uh, this one's just, it's a little bit longer, three, like three and a half pages. So um, I'm not going to read a, um, the pathways of light because we're already uh, three minutes past our time, but I want to thank everybody for coming. I'm so grateful that we're continuing this year. And um, again, once we finish the manual for teachers, we'll go to the, um, song of prayer and then the psychotherapy purpose process and practice um and then we'll start the purple book so just to let you know what's coming up next so uh happy new year again everyone even though we're 10 days in it's good to see everybody and i'll see you next week much love bye thank for you now. thank you thank you thank love you all. everyone thank you, thank you. Uh, happy bye -bye. belated robin <laughs> <laughs> yes, Robin. Robin. Robin.